Hey everyone, are you in need of a Steve Hayes fix as well? I know I am, it's been a long time. Welcome to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Let's go see Steve Hayes. <gasps> Hi Johnny, about time. Johnny, we hadn't done a Betty Davis movie in a while and this is one that I've been saving up for such a long time. 1941's The Great Lie, starring Betty Davis, George Brent, Lucille Watson, Hattie McDaniel, and in her Academy Award winning performance, Mary Astor. Around this time, Betty Davis had been doing some of her most dynamic work. She'd gotten her second Oscar in 38 for Jezebel. In 1939, she did like four movies in a one year that were all hits. She did The Sisters, she did The Old Maid, she did Juarez, she did Elizabeth and Essex, she did five. Dark Victory, which she got nominated for. Well, then she did two of her most evil roles. She did Leslie Crosby in Willie Wyler's The Letter, and she did Regina Giddens in Willie Wyler's The Little Foxes. So people were screaming out for her to play somebody, quote unquote, normal. Oh, I've got a funny feeling in the pit of my stomach. <laughs> when she came back from vacation, they handed her this movie called The Great Lie. And she looked at it and she thought, well, they'll say that I'm not carrying a gun for once. <laughs> Essentially, the plot of the movie is that there's two women and they're both in love with the same man. He leaves the really good one, played by Betty Davis, and he marries this fiery concert pianist, played by Mary Astor. So sorry, darling. Oh! Get out! You hurt! Betty Davis finds out... Sandra was not properly divorced from my predecessor, Mr. Stokes. So... <laughs> then we're not actually married. He marries Betty Davis. I said, Pete, old boy, you're hooked. And Pete, old boy, you are. He is then lost in the jungle in South America and they think he's dead. <laughs> Betty Davis finds out that Mary Astor is going to have a baby. That would have been something, wouldn't it? What? Something of his. So she goes to Mary Astor and she says, look, you don't care anything about the baby and I'm wealthy. So why don't you have the baby, give the baby to me, and I'll make sure you're financially set for the rest of your life. Let me ensure your future, and you ensure mine. Your future. His child. That could be my future. Basically, that's the plot, and then he comes back. Maggie! They had to find somebody to play this bitchy pianist. Now, Mary Astor had been around for a long time since silent films. Her father, you know, they talk about horrible stage mothers. Her father was the stage father of all time. Uh, her name, her real name was Lucille Langhanke. And he was a German, tough German guy. And he wanted a career for his daughter. And he put her out uh, to work really, really early. Hey, the woman's a sensation. She just didn't have the drive. Everybody always said she was one of the actresses who could have been a really major star, but she didn't care. She didn't have the drive. Her father wanted this. She saw she could make a living. She was good at it. She was known in the business as one take Aster. She could do it all in one take. She always came prepared. You're lying. Time will take care of that. 1941 rolls around and she auditions and she was a very good pianist. She could play classical piano. So she auditioned and Betty loved her and fought for her and said, I want her. I want her. And Betty Davis had enough power at that time. She was sort of a firecracker on the set. And most of the men and the directors that worked with her were scared of her, except for Willie Wyler. Well, Edmund Goulding, this queen, was <laughs> the director of this movie. He had done Grand Hotel. He had directed her with Miriam Hopkins and The Old Maid and just about had a heart attack. And in this one, um, he was directing this and Betty went to him and said um, this movie stinks and he said well Betty I don't, know what, I don't know what you expect me to do about it so she said to Mary Astor Mary come into the dress dressing room so she calls Mary Astor and the two of them sit down to have a powwow and Mary Astor said I thought oh boy I'm gonna get fired and she said this movie stinks I think it's up to you and I to rewrite and so I think that's what we're going to do every day you and I are going to get together and rewrite this stinker well, they did. They built up Mary Astor's part, and they laughed and giggled, and, and Golding would go to the door and knock on the door, and he'd go, ladies, are we ready with the rewrites? In a minute! And they, <laughs> they would hand out scripts every day. They beefed up Mary Astor's part until she outbitched Betty Davis, and she won the Academy Award. He never loved you as he loved me. You were second choice. You caught him on the rebound. There's only one thing holding him to you, Maggie, and that's my baby. 
I'd be too proud to hold a man with another woman's child. When she's pregnant, they, Betty Davis takes her out into the desert. And, they're, and, and uh, she's watching what she eats. And she gets up in the night. She sees a light on in the kitchen. And Betty Davis goes in the kitchen. And Mary Astor is making herself a sandwich. And she says, I'm not one of you anemic creatures who can get nourishment from a lettuce leaf. I'm a musician. I'm an artist. I have zest and appetite. And I like food. I've been lying awake in there thinking about food and now I'm going to have it. Sandra, sit down. It's wonderful. It's so funny. And another time she says, can't you stop that wind? It's driving me mad. Bring about this wind. Who brought me to this dump? You did it. I've had enough. And she gets up and she says, I'm going to burn this place down. And she picks up this lamp and like she's going to set the place on fire. And Betty Davis comes over and slaps her twice across the face. You burn me. You burn me. It's high melodrama, a lot of suds, but only as only Warner Brothers can do it. When Mary Astor won the Academy Award for this, she got up and she thanked two people. She said, I thank Betty Davis and Tchaikovsky. She played the piano and she had somebody else playing with her and she synced her hands to do that. And um, some of the most famous concert pianists who saw this movie came up and said, I can't believe you didn't play that. I've, I've played that the Tchaikovsky piece myself and, and you were right in there every single step of the way. <laughs> In the 70s, uh, she wrote a book about her movie career. It was called A Life on Film, and I urge you to read it. It's still one of the best, best books about Hollywood. But in the meantime, sit back and watch two consummate pros go at it. In fact, Mary Astor's last movie was Hush, Hush, Sweet Charlotte. She said, my greatest triumph was in a Betty Davis movie, and I thought, this is a good time to retire. And Betty Davis, they were on location, and Betty Davis rode 60 miles out to the location that day, and she wasn't even had, didn't even have to be there so she could see, uh, watch Astor do her stuff. And she checked her makeup and said to Robert Aldrich, Bob, let her go. She'll show you some things, see how it's really done. And Mary Astor played this little old axe murderess. And then she retired. Ruined finery. That's all I have left. I'm uh, stony broke, is that the phrase? It's a relief to admit it. And you're going to just love Betty Davis, George Brent, Lucille Watson, Academy Award winner Hattie McDaniel, and the brilliant Academy Award winning Best Supporting Actress of 1941, Mary Astor, in Edmund Goulding's The Great Lie. Na 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 boom. Let's all go to the lie. Came here with a suggestion. I meant well. And B Mary, Mary Astor says, I know you did. If I didn't think you meant so well, I'd feel like slapping your face. Don't miss your little train, Maggie. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. 